Welcome back, this is Yama Jack, and today we got uh, Steam Fortress Gunslinger Suicidal. And uh, today I ordered groceries. I ordered them yesterday. But, uh... I got them today. They showed up today. So it wasn't a big order. Just uh, two grocery bags. Um, but it was very convenient. They just came to the door, dropped the groceries off, and then left. And everything that I ordered was just right there. Very, 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 very nice. Um, now, so, so I don't like grocery shopping, I don't like going to the store, I don't like walking around and, and buying stuff, and I often find that when I do that, I end up buying stuff that I don't need, you know, like I'll be there and I'll buy some, I'll, I'll see like, uh, a, um, you know, fruit that I haven't seen in a while and I'll buy it, um, or I'll buy you know, um, maybe I'll splurge when I'm in the cracker aisle looking for crackers and I'll get a little bit more expensive crackers or something. Um, so when I go, I end up spending more money than I expect. And uh, when I was shopping online, that wasn't really the case. It was, it was a lot more of a pain in the butt to, to buy anything at all uh, online. Um, but the trade-off to that is that it, it also costs, and well, you know, you, you get, uh, you, you don't have to go in and, and, and buy anything. Um, but then you also have to pay for shipping. So that's uh, $10 flat per delivery, which is uh, fairly expensive, honestly, uh, for, for shipping. But if it's going to save me from, you know buying random stuff that doesn't really matter, that I don't really need, you know, random fruits and stuff. Um, it's kind of not really costing me all that much in the grand scheme of things. And the other thing is, is oftentimes when I'm buying groceries myself, I'll run out and uh, I'll be like, hey, I'll just go tomorrow. And then I won't go. And then I'll be like, eh, whatever, like it's, I, I got a little bit left, I can just go tomorrow. And then I won't go. And then I'm out of groceries, and I'm like, I really just, I really don't want to go. And I end up ordering Skip the Dishes. And, uh, that happens quite often when I'm uh, buying groceries myself. So I feel like even though, you know, it's $10 per delivery, I'll probably end up ordering groceries three or four times a month. So like $30 or $40 on delivery spent per month. On, uh, on, 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 uh, on, on groceries, but the flip side to that is that I then am not buying random stuff that I don't need, so I'm saving money on that. My god. I'm saving money on that, and, uh, you know, if I'm ever like, oh, I gotta get some groceries, I'm out of this stuff, I don't have to go grocery shop, I just order it, so that there, there isn't gonna come a point where I just, like, don't have groceries and I have to order food. So, in the grand scheme of things, because I'm irresponsible, it's probably saving me money to, uh, to order my groceries. It's probably saving me money. So, I, uh, I really liked it. Got my groceries. Didn't have to, like, go to the store or whatever. It was nice. It was, it was really pleasant. Um, now, you know, eventually, especially... If I end up uh, moving in sooner, if I uh, when I move on to a boat, I'm not gonna be able to do that. You know, you can't just be like, uh, yeah, I'm out at um, Gooch Island, just on an anchorage. Just uh, uh, I'll 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 drift the dinghy out over to you. Could you just uh, pull on up? No, it's it's not it's not. I'll have to go and do that myself. So, <laughs> but it's also easier to like motivate yourself to do that. And I'll probably end up buying more long-term stuff anyway, so I'll go shopping less anyway. Um. And it's not like, you know, I could order Skip the Dishes either. When I'm when I'm out living on a boat. Because similar kind of thing. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, no, I'm just out at uh, Gooch Island. Um, you have to drive across the uh, the ocean. And, uh... Yeah, no, just just right there in the anchorage. Um, I can give you my, uh, my longitudinal... My long... My longitudinal... I can't... I cannot... I, I literally just can't pronounce the word. And latitude, my coordinates. Um, can you airdrop it? It's just, it's just not really an option. Um, so that's a, that's a convenience I'll give up when I live on a boat. But for right now, 
The food delivery is it's it's nice. I did a smaller order today just to see what it was like, if I'd like it or not. And I did. So that's probably I'm gonna be getting my groceries from now until whenever I move on to the boat. Because uh, yeah, again, when when I do move on to the boat, it's it's gonna be not really viable. Not really viable. Actually, I, I, uh, I made a Reddit post actually asking about uh, why it's dumb to live in a marina when you have no experience with uh, with actually like maneuvering the boat around and uh, learning and stuff. Um, so people are gonna get back to me telling me why it's a stupid idea. And uh, like I made the post not because like I want to, you know what I mean? I made the post because I want to know why it's a stupid idea, not because I want to do it and I need to be discouraged, but because I want to know why it's a stupid idea. Because I know it's a stupid idea, I just I don't know why. Um, anyway, whenever I do eventually move on to the boat, I'll have to, to give up on my grocery deliveries. But, you know, whenever you move on to the boat, you're going to have to give up on a lot of stuff when it comes to groceries, really. So, <laughs> big whoop. Comes with a package. It's one of the sacrifices you make. You know, the benefit is you get to be on a boat, so that's a pretty big benefit, I say. I love boats, man. I wish I wish I, uh, I I did this earlier is the thing. I don't like kind of just getting into sailboats again. Like that's that's how you know that it's something I wanted to. Okay. It's bleeding into everything. I'm, I just I can't stop talking about it. Okay. Um, but I wish I did it earlier. You know, like I actually I wanted a boat when I was younger. Um, I went out on a uh, on a charter boat on a fishing uh, tr uh, charter thingy. And uh, it was like the most fun I've ever had, just being out at sea on a fairly small boat. And, uh, like, fishing and just kind of like cruising around with, with no land in sight. Just being out on the ocean, just, you know, all of us on the boat together. Just being out on the ocean. Like, it was, it was the greatest experience, like, I've ever had. And uh, after it happened, I was like, yeah, no, I need that. Like, I need that in my life. Like, this is what I need to do now. And, uh... My family, my mother especially, um... Worked really hard to convince me that I wouldn't be able to afford it. And then I just kind of put off boating in general. Um, just didn't really start paying attention to it anymore. Because I was like, yeah, no, it's like, not something I can do. Uh, no matter what I want, it, it, it won't be able to happen. So I, I just gave up on it. I wish I didn't. You know, I wish I uh, I did my proper research, because, uh, you know, ten years ago, if I had gotten started with, with sailing and putting money away to, to own a boat and getting all that experience, I'd be experienced, and I'd have, like, a decent boat by now. I'd probably even be living on the boat. But, you know, I, uh, I didn't do that. Instead, I listened to people tell me I couldn't, and um, now I'm ten years later, and I'm like, nah, I still want to, though. Like, this is still what I want in my life. <laughs> I, I'm still going to try and do it. And uh, it's like, yeah, no, like, it's it's not it's not an interest that's just going to go. Like, I've, I've had it for, like, ten years that, that I've been wanting this. And that's why I get really, really, really mad when people are like, oh, it's really expensive. There's all this maintenance work and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no. Okay? But, like, shut up. <laughs> I'm going to try. Okay? I'm not giving up. It's not no. It's my it's my dream to uh, to live on a boat. I need it in my life. And uh, so many so many people trying to convince you not to when you when you want to do something like this. It's not like a, a very wise idea. You don't have like a retirement plan. You don't have like very good source of income. You don't have like a lot of things that you just you don't have that would be very convenient for you in your your old age especially um, but here's the thing right oh well who cares no no retirement fund whatever dude I live in uh, I live in Canada I can uh, you know live in a hospital it's fine I'll probably die before I get to retirement anyway if I'm sailing around the world Get sick with uh, some kind of disease in some random country and die on a long passing or a long passage. That's how it'll go, dude. But that's okay. 
Anyway. That's why I get really, really mad when people keep telling me, like, the same stuff that my mother repeated ten years ago. People were like, uh, you know, it's just a, it's just a phase, it's just a fad, it's just, you know, bandwagoning. I'm like, it's, no! I'm not falling for it this time, okay? This time, I'm committed. Last time you were able to fool me, this time you're not. I don't care, you know, I don't know, I'll piss people off all I want. I'll, uh, I'll annoy people, and I'll, uh, I'll make people think I'm an idiot. And I'll make them think that uh, that I'm not going to be able to do it. I don't care. Okay? Like, what I, what I care about is five years from now, I want to be living on a boat. That's what I care about, okay? I don't, I don't care what, what some random dudes think on the internet about uh, how expensive it is to do that. What I care about is how do I get to that point. I'm going to do it. Five years from now, I'm living on a boat. Five years from now, I'm recording a Killing Floor 2 episode out in the Pacific Ocean. I'm telling you. On a laptop in the middle of uh, the lightning storm. Yo, I was watching uh, some sailing videos. I like, I um, I look up videos about like specific things that I that I worry about on uh, on boats, right? So, I actually I actually saw this one video that was really really cool about uh, like live aboard. They had, uh, in the entire, like, three years that they'd been sailing, cruising around the world, they had logged literally every single penny that they'd spent on anything other than, like, the boat purchase itself. Um, and so they had, like, exactly as much money as they'd spent in those entire three years, um, just right there for all to see. And uh, what it cost them to sail around the world, in total, was, like... 17,000 US dollars for the for the two of them on the boat to cruise around the world right like they, they, they went halfway around the world for $17,000 not including the, the price of the um, the boat and whatever stuff they had done to it before they went out you know but once once you have a boat that's in good condition then uh, and, uh, you know, they, they, they made sure to mention all the things that, that went well for them. Like, they were like, yeah, we bought the boat. It had a new engine with, with nothing, like, uh, no, no real hours on it. It was in great condition. We haven't had to do any, like, real work on it. Um, and all this kind of stuff, which is all just stuff that's, like, kind of, like, you know, watch out for. Keep an eye on when you buy your boat, right? Um, so, it was really cool to see that because that was, like, the first time anybody's ever shown exactly how much they spend you know like a lot of youtube channels are like well you know we spend about 500 dollars a month I'm like not nah, come on come on no <laughs> no like I want, I want more information than that you know 500 dollars a month is, is isn't right okay because you, you spend more than that when you're sailing around the world like you're not gonna no um because you're gonna end up spending on uh the odd repair and stuff like that that you're gonna have to like uh, do whatever it's you know fine um, but it's it's, just, it's not like a, a really accurate like this is how much we spent and um, this one channel that I saw did that and it was it was really cool to see and I'm like yeah that's like affordable <laughs> that's like really affordable actually I think it might have been seventeen thousand dollars per year average shadow I'm gonna have to watch it again I don't actually know I can't remember all I remember was like yeah no that's in budget for me um, so you know get started <laughs> on it um, but uh, yeah it was it was cool to see it was really cool to see because most most uh, most yeah they don't do that they don't go into that depth and they did it was really 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 awesome um, yeah, I, I look up, um, like, sailing videos uh, for specific situations that I, I want to know how it gets handled out on the sea, right? Like, I've looked up a bunch of, uh, like, grocery videos. Like, how do you buy groceries on a, uh, on a boat? Like, what kind of stuff are you buying? What kind of stuff are you eating? Um, you know, how much money is that costing per, per trip? And, like, you know, all this kind of stuff, right? And, uh... I'm feeling generous. So I've, I've watched a billion of those with loading up like a bunch of carts and then uh, cleaning everything and like 
checking it all and putting it all into the boat and finding a space for it and all that. Like, super cool stuff to watch. Um, I've watched a ton of videos just touring um, people's boats when they're when they're living aboard. Just an enormous amount of tours. Just to see, you know, like, how much space do these people have? Like, how are they using it? What kind of stuff do they have on board? Like, you know, all this kind of stuff. I've watched um, videos of... Uh, you know, people dealing with robbers, people dealing with, you know, how they deal with pirates, and, um, like, not really gonna have to deal with pirates out here, but, like, definitely, I believe, um, like, Southwest Asia, and then, like, into, sort of, the Africa area, I believe there's, there's, um, more pirates out there. Still uncommon, but, um, you know, more over there, sort of area. Not so much out in the Pacific Northwest, but, you know, whatever. Still, still want to know what, uh, what they do in those situations, what they have prepared for those situations. Um, I've watched videos of people in storms at sea, of, of people at storms at anchor, at storms in marinas, at storms in like, you know, like anywhere. Like, I've watched pe videos of people going down rivers and, um, like, like all the situations that I'm like, I wonder how this would get dealt with on a boat. I just look it up, and then there's like a video of somebody on it. Anyway, I watched a. Uh, a video of um, a couple who were sailing across a, an ocean somewhere, uh, and they ran into a lightning storm. And it was it was like it was beautiful. This this lightning storm, like just these flashing lights, just just lighting up the night sky with with um, with uh, these these enormous claps of, of thunder and like. It was, it was it was a really 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 beautiful video. Now for them, they probably they did they weren't remarking about how beautiful it was. Um, <laughs> it was uh, you know a very terrifying experience for them, a very harrowing uh, experience, I'm sure. But I wanted to know how you deal with that, and it was remarkable how they were like you know. Um, talking about how scary it is and how like terrifying it is to be in this uh, in this lightning storm but they were also like it was their fears were weird to me they were they were like so just alien um because they were like ah oh, this stinking light like if we're if we're out of our you know um you know our our uh Navigation, then it's going to be really, it's going to really suck because you know right now we're going through a lot of, uh, of um, like rough terrain that we really need uh, like the radar and uh, like all of this kind of stuff for, right? Um, and uh, I was I was just I was just thinking about it. And I'm like they're only scared about their boat's electrical stuff breaking. Like, at no point in time were they, like, fearing for their lives. At least not on video. They were just afraid of uh, of their electrical stuff breaking. So, like, I don't know if they just weren't afraid of the lightning actually, like, killing them. Like, does, does lightning just kind of, like, get dissipated into the water when you do that? And it just kind of, like, messes up all of your electronics? Like, I don't know. Um... Like, are you just gonna be fine when you end up in a lightning storm? Because it's gonna happen. If you're sailing, if you're sailing around the world, you can't avoid it, right? Like, try as you might. Okay. You cannot avoid it. If you're sailing around the world, you're sailing, you know, full time for like ten years. The weather forecasts aren't perfect. They're pretty good, but they're not perfect. There's gonna come a time when you're gonna end up in a lightning storm. And you're gonna have to deal with it. It's, it's just you're gonna. It's gonna happen, right? Um, and uh, like I, I was trying to research, like, what do you do in that? Like, how does that work? Like, obviously, you're gonna learn more of that when I'm actually going to, to take these classes and lessons and stuff like that to actually learn. But in my spare time as well, I'm just kind of like, what what do you do in this kind of a situation? Like, is do you just hope you don't die, or like, does the boat have protections in place? Like, I assume it does, right? But I don't know. It was it was uh It was cool to see them going through the storm though because they were just like going about their normal boating stuff 
in a, in the middle of this beautiful lightning storm with with these arcs of of, of light just kind of like all over the sky. It was beautiful, truly terrifying for them. And if I were in the same situation, I would definitely not be thinking it's beautiful. Um, but you know, when you have the the pleasure of looking at it on video <laughs> in a safe enclosed home, uh, yeah, very nice. Um, being anchored in a in the middle of a terrible storm also seems like pretty bad. I watched this one video of this couple who were like at the end of their like food reserves at uh, at Anchorage, and a sudden storm just like coasted over them, and uh, they had uh, like been stuck there for like a week or whatever, and um, so they were like eating just garbage, really. Like you know, the, you you end up you know on a boat you have your your fresh food and stuff that you want to eat first, and then you have your long-term um, non-perishables, you know? Like you have cans of beans and um, rice and you know, maybe some pasta or whatever, right? Like that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, getting, they were getting into that kind of like long-term storage, right? So it was, it was really cool to see them handing that, and also how brutal it can be when you're when you're anchored in the middle of a, a big storm. Like the ship was shaking all over the place. It was nasty. Nasty. But I, I like watching this kind of stuff because you know the more of that the stuff that I see, you know, where it's like this is the bad of of living on a boat. Like, this is this is what sucks about it. That's the kind of stuff I like seeing, you know, because it's easy to go find highlight reels of sailing. It's hard to go find low light reels, you know. And uh, it's the low light reels, in my opinion, that are s just so much more important because it gives you a more realistic understanding of, of what it's like. So those videos where they're showing off, you know, like weathering this terrible storm, having to like go out and bail their uh, their dinghy that they're dragging behind in the in the middle of the storm, soaking wet, and like you know, to to be able to watch that and be like, yeah, that sucks. I'm down. <laughs> you know, like, like that's the kind of stuff that I want to be seeing, you know, like, like all of these sailing channels. They're nice to see. I watch them. I like them. They're fun. Because um, at the end of the day, it's the highlight reels that are really, like, fun about it. It's the low light reels that really convince me that, yes, I want this. You know what I mean? Like, it's weird, right? Like, you'd think it's the highlight reels that, that convince you that you want to do it, and then it's the low light reels that convince you you don't. But... It's the highlight reels definitely that, uh, like, they don't convince me I don't want to. They just don't really, like, convince me that I do want to either, you know what I mean? It's the low light reels when I see how, like, bad it is. Like, the worst case conditions and, like, everything is going wrong. And then at the end of it, they're like, yeah, but it's still alright. I'm like, yeah, no, like, that's, that's, that's the kind of stuff I want to see, you know? I want that. So I, uh, I've been looking up a lot of it. Look at, there's a so many sailing channels out there it's insane um but uh i wanna hey i shot you in the face dude i wanna see um more of those low lights you know more of the uh, the bad stuff that's happening on ships that's the kind of stuff that i'm googling that that's the reasons that i'm finding like more sailing channels as i go because i keep looking up like hey what happens in a lightning storm what happens when you're getting robbed what happens when you're getting you know, attacked by pirates. What do you do in um, in a food shortage? What do you do if you bought a bunch of rotten food? What if you do if um, you know your your water tank is a hole in it? And you know, what if you do if if this happens? And like those kinds of videos are the ones that I'm finding really really nice to watch right now, honestly, because they're they're giving me a much more realistic perspective of uh, of life on a boat, and that's that's what I need right now. Not to convince me that I shouldn't live on a boat, but to sort of solidify my decision that, yeah, I'm comfortable with handling this as well, you know, like, yes. It looks like garbage, but I, I still think that it's a good trade-off, you know? So it's, it's, uh, that's the kind of stuff that I need, to, to, to feel like I'm making a decision that isn't just getting swept up in, uh, in a fad or something, you know? And there's a lot of it out there. They, not the popular channels, though. You know, if you go look at, uh, sailing, you know, SV Dallas, or whatever, most of it, you know, pretty good stuff. They don't really show too much of the, the bad stuff. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff happening that they hide. A lot of stuff happening that they just don't put into videos. Because why? It's not interesting. 
Especially when you're trying to like make it your living to, to afford this lifestyle. Like, why would you? Why would you commit career suicide like that? Like, I get why they don't, but I wish they did. Because I want to. I want to see more of that. I want to see the real, the reality of it. You know. I don't want to. But then the other, the flip side to that is like I don't want to watch like a live stream of somebody just sailing for like two weeks. Because I don't have two weeks to watch you sail. Okay. I have stuff to do. I need. I need a. I need a low light reel. But they don't really exist out there so much. It's okay though. It's okay. We'll uh, we'll get there. And yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. It's just like it's it's I I, I can't I can't shut up about it. It's just sailing, dude. I could talk about it for hours about how much I want to do it. Cause it's, it's all I want in my life right now. Is to go sailing, man. To live on a boat, out on the water, feeling the waves crashing against the hull. It's a beautiful thing. Where'd you go? You went back up? What the heck, man? It's not fair that you get to be invisible. Oh, there he is. Here he comes. You see the you see the crawler kind of like bounce out of the way of him back there. Come on, man! Come on, man! No, I got the minigun now. Oh, come on! What do you mean it isn't fair? You're the invisible one. Come on! See, like right here. He went in there! What the heck? You can go- No! Oh my god, this is going terribly, dude. This is a bad day for, uh... Steam Fortress... Patriarch right now. Fighting, anyway. A good day for him. Bad day for, for anybody who faces him. He's just- he's got, he's got it, like, under control. You know, sometimes you trivialize the KF2 bosses. Sometimes they toy with you. Ah, here he is. No? Oh, he's coming up now. And he was stuck down there for a while. I heard him, but I'm like, he doesn't sound close enough to be, like, right here. So I guess he was stuck back there for a while. You're not getting away this time. No, you're not. Let's go. What a fight. What a fight. It's the hardest patriarch fight I've had in a while, man. It was brutal. Money, what the heck is this? Terrible. Terrible. It was like, I, was, I had to work for that one. <laughs> I had to work. It was like, it was effort, man. My goodness. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. So thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like it. Subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.